purpose of this video is to give an overview of the different lights that show up on a bottoms up circuit board and what those lights mean and how they can assist you in uh, any maintenance or technical support tricks you might need to do. The first one you see here on the dispenser, it flashes green every once in a while. Uh, this means that the board is plugged in, but it is not on. So you just hit the dispenser on off and everything lights up. You can see that the empty K lights are flashing. Sometimes this will happen when the empty keg detector is full of beer and the white float is floating. Everything looks good, but they're still getting this. This means that the reed switch, it's either the uh, gray cable or brown cable uh, attached to the empty keg detector has failed, so they're gonna need a new one to swap out. A note on that, you can tell the customer that they can operate in prime so they would just have to manually uh, push the cup down and just hit the start button and fill that way. Or they can stay in auto start. They can actually clip the cable that's back there, um, <clears throat> sort of at the base of the reed switch. Um, because our, our short draw systems don't require uh, empty keg detector cables or anything. So it'll still work in auto start, even with that cable clipped. Uh, it's important to note that in addition to that, when that keg blows, it'll make a mess instead of stopping and preventing any foam, which is why we have the empty keg detectors on the long draw system. Let's talk about cup sensors. Um, usually on every maintenance call, you'll get someone's gonna say, hey, I have a bottom of system, it's not pouring beer. So we kind of wanna walk all the way from the back to see what's going on. Uh, the first thing we're gonna check for is to make sure the cup sensor is working. The easiest way to do that is to go into prime mode See, we got four lights here. That's good. Set down a cup. And we still get four green lights. Or four red lights, excuse me. Nothing's happening. So, what that's telling us is that the cup sensor is not reading that there is a cup on there. These four lights should be green. So, that's how you know it's going to be a cup sensor. You can do a cup sensor switch out. Because... That is what we're looking for. That means those four green lights show us that the cup sensor is working. Sometimes they'll push down and it's not happening, so just have the customer rotate the slider magnet. There might just be a dead spot in one of the magnets, so that'll help you make a determination if it's a cup sensor. Or, and I talk about this in my cup sensor switch out video, you can just take off that coupler, put a different one on, and that'll show you if the cup coupler is causing the issue or not. Let's talk about the flow sensor next. So in prime mode, what you want to do is press on that. Cup sensor works fine. There should be lights flashing around the start stop button, but nothing is happening. And as a result of when that happens, might get a little bit of liquid you get two red flashing lights there so that's telling us that the flow sensor is not reading typically when you get two red flashing lights that's telling you that a something is wrong often something is um, obstructing the valve as well but to double check to make sure that's just the flow sensor and you can also notice, so we get, we're looking for flashing lights around the start stop button, like that. We just got two red lights. You can also tell when this starts to go, we don't get any lights showing up around there. So, uh, flow sensor switch out based on those lights. That's how we know the flow sensor is working. A note on flow sensor issues, flow meter issues as well. Sometimes it'll start to pour, but it won't, so you start getting a red flash light. So you know something is up. So we're not getting 
flashing lights around there. So it makes us think it could be a flow sensor. But if you manually reach underneath, um, so we're going to manually open the valve, and it kind of feels like it's sticking. Like there could be something obstructing it, because the valve won't open up all the way. That means that there is likely this little shim that's fallen out of the inside of the nozzle post is what's stuck in that valve. So you'll have to take off the bottom block assembly, remove the diaphragm, and look up into the valve. Oftentimes this will fall out once you take off the diaphragm. Other times it's kind of really lodged in there, so you just got to kind of look up there, use a little dental pick to fish it out. Then put on a new diaphragm, put everything back together, and everything should work. Whenever you are in manual start, or program size, or auto start slash pour mode, whenever you're pushing down the cup coupler, the LEDs should come on. If not, uh, the LEDs might need to be swapped out or there's a connection issue on the circuit board. Right, nothing's happening there, just getting two red flashing lights. We hear the valve click open, nothing's coming out. Again, the same thing. So we know that there's some pressure on there. We hear it trying to work, but nothing's happening. So in this case, we kind of want to look from the back. Is the gas supply turned on? Are the valves open? Is the keg tapped? Is there pressure coming from everywhere? And in this case, I have the pressure turned off, so that's why nothing's coming out. And you're just getting two red flashing lights. Right, two red flashing lights again, something's going on. We can hear the valve click open, so we know that there is pressure, but nothing's going on. So in this case, I would ask the customer to reach underneath and the dispenser, they're going to touch the black sl um, plastic slider ramp on the back of the valve with their finger and hit that spring loaded. So I'm pressing it and the beer is still not coming out. And the issue for that, because I just ran into this, uh, the person had either changed out a diaphragm to something and they did not put the linkage log and C-clip back on the base of the plunger rod. Let's put those back on and the valve will open. All right, two red flashing lights. We know something is up. Something's probably preventing liquid from coming out, whether it be pressure, something not put back together on the bottom lock assembly, or oftentimes it could be sticky linkage. And what that entails is so look at the bottom here, so we don't have our cross beater here, here at the moment. It's just so I can show you what's going on. This is what we're using to mainly open the valve. And that pushes a spring load for the solenoid. Oftentimes this metal rod here, right around where it goes into the solenoid around this spring, might get beer gunk on it, um, might just kind of get old over time and get some dirt. And so it makes it kind of difficult to open up, so this should be a nice smooth operation. Sometimes it just barely sticks, and then once you kind of work that free, it might work a couple times, then you'll get the flashing lights again. So you can just take a warm rag, wipe off any gunk around there, and that should make everything work smoothly.